Hello, so we're starting with a new VOD review. So today I'm going to go over something that's been really strong and it's getting like, not kind of like nerfed pretty pretty aggressively I think. But this is going to be the uh, the Kindred Gnar reroll if I'm not mistaken. So uh, everybody's been saying it's like the best comp in the patch. Uh, it's getting B patched today so it won't be as strong obviously. But just to be topical, I tried it out yesterday. Uh, without even knowing that it was the best one, I just kind of looked at the uh, the patch notes and I said, okay, well, like, kind of every other reroll got kind of nerfed and Gnar was the only one that was kind of, like, got something in return, if that makes sense. Like, Senna got, like, nerfed and buffed, so Senna Gnar seems like it might be okay. And Gnar as well, like, they nerfed Titans a lot and Titans was, like, on all those, like, really oppressive reroll lines. But Gnar got, like, a buff as well, so it seemed like, okay, it'll probably be fine. Everybody's been complaining that it's, like, broken. Um, I didn't play it perfectly, obviously, um, because you know it wasn't. It didn't feel like that easy of a win for me in this game. Um, I, I don't even think I win. I, I might have gone like second or third. Um, but the main thing is like dryads and kindred and all of those rerolls are really good. Uh, the main thing you usually want when you're playing dryads is you want a dryad plus one, right? Because a dryad plus one uh, helps you to hit six dryad, which then is like a really strong win con. Um, it also makes your mid game a lot more stable because you don't have to rely on leveling and trying to find an Orn. So you can kind of like play around that into mid game really well. So here, um, it kind of, my, my game plan's a little bit flustered. Um, I think like the rust uh, is kind of desettling a lot. So here I end up taking slamming. So this game's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little bit of a mess. Uh, but there is some signs of like, this is like, you know, how you can play in these spots as well as trying to play like fluidly just to get placements right so i have um it's artifact anvil to start uh i slammed blue buff blue buff before uh popping the anvil which is maybe a mistake because mana zane i think is really good on kindred but i, I just get a zanyas anyway so zanyas is fine and i split my items because i'm on i'm slamming so basically slamming i'm thinking like okay um in this game in particular i was just thinking okay like a, a nar kindred start and opener i can probably tempo this into a level nine and just play around five costs that's what i originally wanted to do so i took slam in that will help me to level up basically right um it's not really good to go reroll if you take something that gives you exp but in the same way so uh, if you take an augment that gives you exp and like automatically levels you um, it can also help you in a reroll comp because you don't have to spend your gold on actually leveling. So you save gold in one way. It's almost as if you get extra rolls or free rolls, um, like a reroll comp, right? So in this case, I'm just playing. Um, I'm kind of playing very flexibly right now. I'm thinking like I want to try like maybe like an AP, like Zanya's blue buff might be good on like a Morgana carry. Like I just want to try to get to four costs and five costs because. Um, that's what was changed in the patch and I'm it's still early on. I'm trying to figure it out my first first couple games You can see like I played two games before this one. I went uh, five six uh, I might have played one more. I don't know if it updated yet the tracker uh, And I was just trying to force four costs and try and see and feel it out and it doesn't feel that great It feels better. I think you can play for like fourth a lot of the times But it's not like there's any particular four costs besides Kaisa or the Kaisa line that was like shown uh, or that everybody knows about that's really like coming into play and obviously it might just be because I'm not playing around them as well as I could I think Lee Sin has the potential to be really strong uh, I played Lilia and I got first and I think Lilia is extremely strong if you have a good setup for her She just relies a little bit um, Like uh, a lot of the four cost comps like if you're rolling like if you're stuck on eight It still doesn't feel good to be stuck on eight. You really need to get to nine or else you're probably not getting a top four That's how it kind of feels um, and I would like there to be strategy of if I'm stuck on eight rolling for four costs, I can still find a way to play for a top four just by playing with multiple four costs. But it feels like you really need some of the five costs to up your damage or up your resistances or uh, tie your board together. Um, anyways, that's like my little rough read. Uh, sorry about yesterday's video as well. It was a little bit lower quality. I had to uh, post it because I want to keep my daily upload streak. I didn't really want to post a clip because I thought like it would be more fun just to post that video. And I felt like the commentary was okay, but it was a little bit jumbled because I was like, not only was I uh, queuing with my friend that I was talking to, I was also like eating. So <laughs> in hindsight, it might have not been the best idea, but I, that was the Lilia game that I was talking about that I went first. And I thought it was really fun. Anyways, 
Uh, I find a Death's Defiance because it was an extra anvil or whatever. So I, have, I got like an extra artifact. Um, so I, I just made Death's Defiance on Gnar. And now I have like a pretty good setup. The thing is with any reroll comp, like what I always say, is uh, the same thing like in my Janna video. If you have a reroll comp and your units are very strong, right? Like this Gnar line that was very strong. We'll see how it is after the nerf. But like uh, Janna, for example, like there's lines that they're strong. And the reason they're really strong rerolls isn't because like the three star is just infinite, just so much better. A lot of the times these ones are because the two, co the two star versions of these units are extremely strong right they're extremely you're extremely capable to play around tempoing and preserve a lot of hp using those units right so in this case um in this case that's why it works out really well so for me it's like um i'm just kind of playing to tempo around these units i should also open my uh my inking application which i will do in the background also if you do not uh if you watch these videos and you enjoy the content i do daily content a lot of them are just vod reviews of my game uh, i'm still waiting to find the time in my life to uh super duper grind this set because i feel like i'm not i don't really rank up if i'm streaming or doing these vod reviews uh i need to like put in the hours of just like playing like 100 games in a row um in order to rank up so uh but either way it'll be daily content i will try my best to explain new team comps as well as patch notes and please make sure to like and subscribe if you like that content if you don't that's fine uh anyways so let's go here Put my inking up Is that visible for everybody? Let's see. No. All right, give me one second. Sorry, it's a flicker of a black screen and now the inking app should be working. Okie dokie. So, um, I'm just playing around these. I'm not really win streaking or lose streaking as you can see. So it's not necessarily the best thing. Ideally you want to like win streak if you want to go to four. I do natural upon an orn, which is probably the hardest part to hit with the comp because like, you know, when you're rolling for two costs and you're rolling on level six, it's sometimes hard to hit these. I also don't have a, uh, a Rek'Sai yet, which is also a little bit of a problem if I was committing to the Gnar line. But now that I have an orn, I have a Kindred with really good items and I have this uh, Gnar. I'm kind of in a spot where it's like, um, I can either commit to the reroll line, but I only have one copy of each of them, right? I would suggest not committing to a reroll if you only have one copy of everything. I know that people say that NAR is very forcible, and I'm sure people have a lot of success doing that. Um, but it's also getting nerfed now, um, so, you know, a lot of these things will change in terms of, like, uh, how we interpret this line, right? It might be that this line is completely axed after the nerfs, it might be that it's still equally as strong, because that happens a lot in TFT. Um, the main thing that I'm trying to illustrate is that my spot for reroll isn't necessarily the best because I don't have a bunch of copies yet, right? Um, what's going to happen is after Krugs, typically when you're going for a reroll, if you're going for a two cost reroll, right? Two cost reroll, three, two, you roll upgrade, right? And then, uh, four one you send three star right this is the approximate tempo that you want to be at right so typically um if you're committing to the reroll line you want to be very strong on stage three right stage three is really important for you to stabilize and to save a bunch of hp and you want to win streak right because if you're playing a low cost reroll a lot of the times like unless you like high roll obviously if you high roll or you get like all your units and you're just like giga fucking going first it's like yeah you can make it to nine and you can do these crazy things the main thing you want to do though is you want to win stage three and then you want to send on stage four right because um 
if you win on stage three, you have the econ and the HP that will allow you to survive most of stage four when you start to fall off. And hitting the three stars on stage four will then allow you to um, temple yourself into a good position on stage five. Right? Because your econ will recover in stage five to level and then cap out your board. Right? Obviously, if you hit a bunch of units, um, you can go a little bit above tempo, but that's typically how it would be in like a average roll to low roll situation. So if I am committing to the reroll line, what I should do is 3-2, I get my augment, I level to 6, and then I just send it for my units, right? Um, I forget what it was. I remember during this match, I wasn't paying attention, but I think I forgot about slamming for one turn. Uh, Sometimes, like, it's just like general rust, and I apologize if you look at that and you think that I'm uh, shit, you know, it is what it is. Uh, for me especially, it's like, um, I haven't played for like a little bit over a week, so a lot of the daily content I was doing uh, was all old VODs that I was reviewing, and I was just keeping up like relatively with the meta, like watch a couple streams and like read a couple things, but like there's a general rust in terms of just like, you know, what to think about and what to make and like a lot of mistakes that just happenstance their way across. Um, so this game will be a bit rough. Maybe the next two games might also be a bit like, oh, why is he doing that? Anyways, I find a Gnar. So now what I'm doing is I'm doing what I said, which is just send it uh, partially, right? I'm just rolling for a Gnar upgrade. And I have a Kindred pair, so I'm also rolling for the Kindred upgrade, right? Uh, I'm in a bit of an awkward spot. It was definitely the upgrade the Aatrox, but I just didn't want to spend too much money. I was looking for this Rek'Sai more so than the Aatrox. And I have a Shen already, which helps the Ornn. So I'm like, whatever. So I sent it. I'm 20 gold. Uh, usually you want to be around 30 gold because 30 gold, um, the reason you always want to be around 30 gold is because 30 gold um, makes it really easy to get to 40 and then 40 makes it really easy to get to 50. It's just the way the interest works because 30 gold, you get three interest and usually I think uh, you get seven gold uh, minimum in some rounds or if you're, I think if you're streaking, if you have like a one streak, you get seven gold. Um, sorry, like a one, like a two streak, you would get seven gold because like six for the round and then like one gold, something like that. Uh, but anyway, it's just like really easy to go from 30 to 40 to 50 and then you recover your econ and you're making maximum interest, right? So rolling beyond 30 in a lot of line, in a lot of cases, it's like not necessarily the best thing to do. Um, but you always want to keep a little bit of interest going because that can help you rebuild your bank so that you can have enough gold to like, you know, the more gold you have, the more decisions and options you have open to you basically so you always want to have like a good amount of bank see so there um as you can see it's like i'm streaking obviously but i was at 20 gold um and i had to sell something to make 30 right and then if i was at 30 i would have been able i would have just easily just been able to make 40 it's like it's it's like that there's like math behind it uh but that's why you always hear like those memes and like a lot if you watch streams of other players playing they always say oh yeah make 30 make 40 make 50 as a joke but that's the reason behind it so even if when you're sending it and now what you want to do is the rest of the stage is just build up a bunch of money because I might just like you're going to hope that you natural copies of the units for the reroll, but then you're going to send it after. Now, my items are very fucking good for my units, right? Because I have Death's Defiance Titans, which is like giga strong on Gnar. And then I have a Zhonya's. I made a Giant Slayer just because like uh, I didn't want to put like an I, I, like those are the components that I had left over. So I like as you can see, I had to slam my items. I think I'm holding like one extra sword here. Um, like that's why I have the Ari because with slamming, right? You can like make it so that this works. Um, I didn't really feel like I had a good silver option in terms of like a combat. The only one that I could have taken was Harm Assist One, but I didn't want to take Harm Assist One. Um, like in terms of combat uh, for silver like usually with a reroll you want to stack with combat augment That's another problem. I had anyways. Uh, this guy really annoyed me this game um, So you see how he just took the spat like I, I Remember it was funny because like my friend was playing mythic in this lobby My friend is the the guy who has the Nico reroll and this guy like I don't understand He ends up like winning the lobby. I think like he won the game So he's I, I, like maybe he's just the better player but I swear to God, I needed, I wanted this spat because it would have won me the game, make me six triad, and I was young, wild, and free. This guy also took young, wild, and free, and it's like that's fine, right? But he takes the spat, and I shit you not, that spat stays on his bench for the entirety of the game. Like it stays on to, the, it stays on his bench until like stage five. It was so infuriating because I scout. It's like, what does he need a spat for? He has no, like, he literally doesn't make a spat the whole game. 
But I thought he was gonna like it was so annoying because I was like, bro, this guy just griefed the spat, full sacked, went nine, hit everything, and then one out. It's like what? It's like th that can't be right. Like he's down so much tempo. And somehow he just turned the ship around. And you know, like good kudos to him, he's fucking goaded, but like holy fuck was it annoying. I was like, anyways, because Dryad Spat just wins the game, because I already have the Orn, right? Then I just need to make it to nine and do the Azir, and I would have tempoed with my leveling augment, but it's okay. I just want to point it out because I might, I don't know if I'll say it later, but uh, that might be an incident that I'll talk about later if I play the person and you see what their board ends up being. But maybe that's the right play. Maybe just like super greeting in some of these lobbies if people aren't that strong is, is the thing to do, right? I also don't understand what happens here. So this guy in the lobby, it might just be because I'm like falling behind and maybe I'm like, uh, how do I phrase it? Maybe I'm just like like emerald four like there's a lot of people like experimenting and stuff in the new set and like learning stuff because it's it's like low emerald right um but this guy's like 150 health because he took tiniest titan he's full streaking and i don't know how he doesn't cap out his board because he should have infinite gold i don't know what he ends up doing i think maybe like low world trying to go for like jana three instead oh yeah i'm just scouting that guy that I was annoyed at but that's okay um, anyways, I didn't really natural any other copies of Nar or Kindred, and that's a problem here, right? Because now I'm in a spot where it's like, do I use this to tell- Like, I'm only level 650 because I sent it pretty deep, right? I sent it pretty deep for the Kindred pair and the Nar pair. I'm uncontested, but, um, because my items are so good for Kindred Nar, I'm kind of just thinking, like, do I commit to this reroll or do I just send it and go, like, um, next? Anyways, I fought, uh the pop drop blossom which has the archangels the drop blossom is just way stronger than me right now so i lose this fight losing this fight's pretty bad because i was six streaking so now i don't get the streak gold and without the streak gold it makes it really hard to go to level seven go to level eight and go to level nine with like a good fast nine tempo so instead i think i just at this point i just commit to uh i just commit to going uh the kindred nar reroll now one of the main things you'll notice here is that I have this guy and this guy. It's because I hit an Orn early, right? I should have Warden, right? Usually you play Alawi to get like four Ghostly and Warden and you play like four Dryad like that. Um, but you need to level up. You need to be like level seven to fit everything in. Uh, I kind of just didn't do that because I have um, the Bruiser HP. He has Death's Defiance, so I feel like he's strong enough. Like, I don't think the Warden makes that much of a difference in this particular spot. And I wanted my Orn to live long enough to drop an extra item. So I wanted, I felt like Behemoth was more value in order to get the extra item onto the Gnar. Because I wasn't making an item right away. Now, my items didn't really work out well. Um, I think one of the big problems here is that, like, I don't really have another Gnar item. I already have three Kindred items. Um, so I just have to like use it. I think I also maybe forget about slamming. I think I might forget about slamming. Okay, no, I don't. See, with slamming, you can put it on your bench unit so that the slamming still works. Um, anyways, oh, I, I didn't really f fully explain this, I don't think. But the reason I took Young Wild and Free was because I wanted the potential of getting a spat for Dryad plus one, as well as getting like good items for my Gnar because I was playing Tempo, so I figured that I'd be a lot of HP. The only other combat I had was Harmacist, but I have a Zhonya's on Kindred and a Death's Defiance on Gnar, so I felt like Harmacist wasn't that good um, in terms of like a combat. So here, especially, I'm looking for a really strong combat. Whenever you play a reroll, uh, a combat is really strong. I think Martyr... I don't know what the stats are for Martyr. I should check. I'll check right now for everybody. I figured Martyr was the best option because uh, Dryad, it recovers 9% HP of your whole board and Dryad all works on scaling HP of your whole board. So I figured uh, that's probably good. Let's just say like Nar 3 star. And then... Uh, augments and let's say like mar let's just go gold uh yeah it's actually really good the placement goes down by a lot here i'll show you right let me just uh go stats yeah, I just put Nar 3 and Martyr, and it says that's pretty good. That's what I figured. I wasn't able to look at the stats because I feel like I'm taking... I take too long on making decisions. Um, like, when I play the game, 
uh, a lot of times I just multitask, so I play the game while streaming. And when I'm playing the game and streaming, I have to tab out, and then I have to tab out between my OBS and the the, the Firefox to get like the actual web browser for stats. I don't have two two monitors, so um, a lot of the times when I'm playing these games, I might make suboptimal decisions on like actually picking the augments. I think this whole game is kind of scuffed because my game plan had to switch drastically. Right, I was originally planning on just going fast nine with the slamming. But just based on like how the lobby was playing and what I was what I had on my board, I decided to just send it for uh, send it for this, like send it on um, send it for Nar three Kindred three because I figured that the way the items worked out, it uh, it would be really hard to replace everything, right? Because we got so many extra items to have two really good um, Orn items on their respective champions, and I got dropped this Orn early. In my head, I was like, yeah, I should probably just uh, roll for these units, right? So what I do is, remember how I said you have to send it on stage 3? I look at my HP and I look at everybody else's boards, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, these guys are really strong. This is the guy that has a spat on... See, so this is his bench. He d has items that he didn't slam, and he has a spat that he hasn't made yet. And he doesn't make the spat for, like, another whole stage, right? The so this is what I mean that I was annoyed. Now, I didn't send it. To zero like i'm at 40 gold here so he still beats me but just narrowly but it's just so annoying because i feel like if i beat him here i think i think he doesn't go top four and he doesn't have enough time to stabilize but he's literally holding like orns like i think he had a rabidons on an orn instead of putting the rabidons on a lilia you know what i mean and he has like an adaptive helm like look at his board like it was just so annoying because like this is what I mean by like sometimes like how do I phrase it? It's like sometimes oh anyways I beat this guy. Nice, good job. Good mechanics. I know there's a Nar there, but this gives me orange too. Uh how do I phrase it? It's like stuff like this makes the game really unfun. Because this guy, like, I feel like that's not the right decision, right? Like if I VOD reviewed my own game and I saw myself with a spat on bench for like two stages straight, right? three mythic three invoker am i thinking to myself damn right that's a good play that was the correct decision it's like i i feel like you know what i mean like i feel like that's not a position that you just turn into a first right and at the same time it was annoying for me because it's like um like i hit the orn off the carousel so it's fine but i think it was annoying for me because uh um, that spat would have like won me the game, right? Because from my spot, having a Dryad plus one when I already was having like Nar Kindred and I was playing towards Orn and stuff, I would have had such a sick game, right? But it's okay. Uh, I just want to point that out. Uh, but anyways, that person won. The reason I'm bringing like to it is because maybe that is the right decision to play in this meta. Maybe you just have to super greed and hope for like the Giga, the Giga win out, right? Because he ends up win. I think he ends up winning the lobby, right? So. Obviously, like, I'm VOD reviewing this now. I VOD reviewed it myself as well. I still don't think it was, it was necessarily the right decision, but maybe it's always take spat, right? It might just be, like, if you're playing towards, like, Mythic, Dryad, or anything where, like, a plus one works, you just always take spat because of how powerful it is. Like, making the breakpoint stabilizes you a lot harder than, like, units and items. That might be the case in this patch. Um, so I'm going to pay attention to it a little bit more. Uh, I'm now sending it pretty deep. Uh, because I, I'm I'm starting to roll a little bit more aggressively. I'm slow rolling this whole stage. The reason I'm not sending it, like I know I said you send it on stage 4. The reason I'm not sending on stage 4 is because I'm 71 HP, right? I don't feel the need to pressure the lobby immensely. I leveled to 7 also because they changed the odds. It's it's lower odds on the 4 costs, on the 3 costs. So I could have stayed level 6, but I do want to be able to fit in my board. Because right now I'm 4 Dryad. And I needed to fit in this extra Reaper so that my Kindred actually does a lot more damage. Right? So, your leveling to 7 is always good. Because if you're level 7, you also have the small percentage chances for the... Uh, like, you, you're pretty reliably able to hit the 4 cost. Which was really important for me to hit the Orn before I hit the Orn. As well as the 1% chance of just, like, getting bailed out by, like, a Legendary that fits really nicely in the board. So, I always like to... Uh, uh, like, I feel like... You never really want to roll on 6 because you don't have, like, you have literally 0% chance here and you have such a low percent chance here that it's, like, very difficult to, like, hit a lot of the units, if that makes sense. Um, I think what would be better, though, now is that because I have my Orn upgraded, I should switch this to an Alawi, right? Because switching this to an Alawi will make it a lot better 
um, in terms of like just having the extra um, warden for my Gnar that is my main front line. And this Kindred, I want to make a cane eventually. The one thing I had problems with is just like what to do with my extra AP items. I really wanted to hit a... Uh, I would have really liked to hit a... Uh, what's it called? Uh, what's his name? A, uh, an, an Azir, right? Because I feel like my items, like with uh, Rod and Morello, I feel like I would have really enjoyed to have an Azir on my team. Um, I end up just making... like I had this extra cape because of slamming. Uh, I end up just making Even Shroud and Spark. I'm just like, whatever, I'll just have like both utility. Who cares? Um, typically, you make Even Shroud, I think, with this comp. Because if you're playing Aatrox, Aatrox has a little bit of Shred. So he does like some of the Spark work. Um, I got dropped two Duplicators. Uh, I was debating like whether or not I use it on the Gnar. But I just need one extra Gnar. Uh, I, so I rolled really deep. Because I'm like, okay, I have to spike this turn. So I hit my Kindred 3. Um, and next turn, I'll probably roll deep to hit the Gnar 3 just to guarantee a top 4, basically. Right? Because I just don't want to lose the top 4. I'm um, holding these Aatroxes. Aatrox 3 doesn't really do much. If anything, I should be dropping Aatrox and maybe, uh, like Aatrox and Rek'Sai for Azir and Alawi. Because Azir, um, I can use my extra AP items on. And then, uh, Alawi, uh, gives my Gnar Warden. Right? Um, but usually you play this line because you're rolling on 6 and you're trying to hit all the 2 costs. And a lot of times it works really well with something like 2's Healthy is a really great combat augment for this line. Um, there's other stuff like, uh, uh like stuff like that where, or like if you have like a rolling augment, you just roll with the odds of 6 because it's just a lot better. Now I hit the cane. Uh, typically cane, like especially with like Dryad plus 1 or other stuff. You usually don't play like 4 Reaper with this line, but Kane now with the buffs is just a really, really, really strong unit. Um, I end up just using it on the Gnar here because like, you know, it is what it is. And then I level to put in 4 Ghostly with the Morgana. Uh, the Morgana is kind of like a placeholder in my head for Azir at this point. I would have liked to put this as like an Azir and then maybe switch out this for like Alawi and then I get Warden in. Because uh, not having Warden, at like earlier on, there was a little bit of justification for it because like it doesn't do that much because it was like a Nar 2 and I had Orn and like, you know, just buffed the other units as being tanky and whatnot. Uh, but now it kind of like really essential, right? That it, um, because by Nar 3, you just want the Nar 3 to live just a little bit longer so it goes infinite, right? Every little bit that it lives is a little bit more that it goes infinite, right? Uh, the reason for that, um, what I mean by that is like, as like the Gnar living for like a second longer, in a second, one of your opponent's damage dealers could die. And then once they die, um, you know, you start the ball rolling and everything starts going and you, you know, it works out. Anyways, this guy hit everything even though contested. He has an Azir, which I was looking for with three items. He got a Mythic plus one that he put on an Annie. He has uh, the, the fucking Lilia three items. Right? It's like, holy shit. So this guy, I don't know what the fuck happened in this lobby. But now, this was the guy that was holding the spat the whole time. And yeah, he's like 1 HP and he turns it around. He's gonna go first. Like, there's nobody that's that strong. Because he has like legendaries. He made it to 9. He rolled with like, I don't know how little gold he rolled on 9. Because like, he was like so close to dead. And he has a Lissandra. I think eventually, this guy's gonna have 3 item Lissandra too. And I don't even know what the fuck happened. He's just duplicating the Kha'Zix to have a random Kha'Zix 3 as well. So you know what? Yeah. So now I fight him again. I spiked, but I didn't spike as hard as this guy. Like, it, it's... This comp is really bad if you're playing against a Lissandra as well. Because as soon as your Nar gets taken in by the Lissandra, you lose, like, literally most your front line as well as most your damage. Because the Nar and the Kindred need to work together to do, like, a shit ton of damage. As I hit the Azir... Hopefully I play the Azir. I don't know what I ended up doing this game because I was a bit like lost and stuff. Um, but it should be like Azir over like the Rek'Sai and then I like play that. But anyways, there's there's many people holding Azirs. So I'm, I might not even hit Azir too because this guy has two Azirs. And there's another guy that has a... Uh, the other guy that I was playing has the one Azir in the way and he's already level 9. I'm still level 8, 0 gold. So it's just like a, it's just a mess. But it should be this and this for Azir and the other one, right? Or this I think it should be. I might not even play the Azir because I might just think that the front line's a little bit more important. Because I don't even have Invoker in. 
Yeah. I think I end up doing this. But it should be Azirin, because I need somebody to hold the Morello. Even though Azirin isn't necessarily the best Morello holder. Yeah, this was a huge mistake, I think. I think I think what I end up doing is I put the Gwinsu on like some random unit, and then like I just don't know what to do with this. And I'm losing slamming value, but that's fine because I'm just I'm just confused. I think I put on there like a frontline unit. Yeah, I just put on the Shen because I'm just lost. And then I just put the Gwinsu on a, a bench unit because I'm dizzy. This was a bad decision. I know I was talking about it earlier of what I should have done. In hindsight, I was just like very lost, right? Um, but like look at this guy with the Gwinsu Azir. Like that's what I should have done. I think I just didn't want to lose Bruiser because Bruiser works really well with Dryad just by having like the extra 100 HP. I think I end up beating this guy just barely. Maybe. Yeah, I just barely beat him because I have Kindred with Zanyas. But yeah. Anyways, I think this is the guy that was like full streaking the whole game and he has like 100 HP. I just don't know how he doesn't cap out as high. I guess he just really low roll. But I should switch out this for a zero probably. More damage is probably good because I do have the Orn. You can see me thinking about it. Because it's like I have a Gwinsu kind of going to waste because I just don't have enough backline damage. Yeah, I just never make the connection that the Gwinsu is really good on a zero and stuff. I think what I was thinking of is just like the, the 100 HP on everybody. Because I really want my Nar to live. And I'm really scared because my Nar has... Uh, usually Nar has like double tank item. Like you have double titans or some shit. Uh, but in this case I had the uh, the Runans. Which isn't really a tank item. As well as doesn't really synergize well with Nar. Was just the only AD item I could have made at the time. So I was just kind of sad about it. Um, and I was just worried that I needed the Nar to have a little bit more tankiness. Henceforth why I left in the Bruiser. But I think it's always play the Azir instead. Um, because I can always keep this on the bench and I can try out both of them. But right now I have like a, a Gwinsu on the bench, right? I'm not slamming Gwinsu on Kane, um, because on Kane I really wanted a healing item. Because, uh, Kane kind of, Kane can be like a tertiary carry in this comp, which is what makes it really, really strong. Um, right? Because right now relying on just these two is a little bit awkward. Um, when I can like itemize the cane, so I'm hoping to get like a healing item. I don't, I don't think I do, and uh, it just turns into a mess. But yeah, it should definitely be. I think in most cases here, I think we can all agree it should have been a zero in. But that's the point of like reviewing. It's also just general rust. I think my decision making is really slow. There's a couple times I even lost value on um, what's it called, the thing. I think I might just just take Edge of Night probably. I don't get a healing item, but Edge of Night's fine. Yeah. I think what I'm thinking in my head is that I'll just level and play Azir, right? Because I don't really... I think that's what my thought process was. But I could have just... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna... I might not end up leveling because I, I still have to roll for Kane 2 probably to stabilize. Right? Anyways, this was the guy that I was talking about. So as you can see, now he hit Annie. And he has a list too, and he has a Rabidon on this list, and he has like triple item Azir. It's like there's no way anybody beats this guy. The only guy that could have beat this guy is the guy that was like, I think he went like fast 10 and then he didn't have any gold and he just lost out. So, yeah, that's kind of bad. I'm also at a high enough level that if I rolled and I hit a Nautilus, a Nautilus might also be a really good Warden to play in if I leveled up for a Warden. I still don't have Warden in at all, do I? No, I do. I put in the allow. Never mind. Yeah, I'm just trying to go nine here. Uh, is that even the right play, or should I just roll deep on eight? I think I should have rolled deep on eight. Yeah, it's kind of difficult. I think I just really wanted a zero two. I should have probably rolled deep on eight. I could have remade the, the 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 Shen probably. But I think it's a lost anyways. I think I, I got my max placement this game, but it just worked out because I think the rest of the lobby wasn't super like dialed in. I don't know describe it. I don't mean it in like a I, I don't mean as a diss. I just mean it like I think everybody's like kind of experimental and rusty uh with the uh the new patch, right? Just trying out different stuff. Uh trying to play towards different lines that you're maybe not comfortable with. Yeah, so this isn't even close. Um, the biggest problem is just having a Lissandra. A Lissandra kind of hard counters this comp, right? Um, you kind of have to place the Gnar 
uh, so it doesn't get hit by the Lissandra. But this guy just has so much damage that he's placing, like, he's he, this guy's placing his uh, Lissandra on one side and all his damage dealers on the other side. So I either have to take full aggro of his damage dealers or I have to hope that I happen across, like, uh, wrapping on the Lissandra side, right? If that makes sense. So just really awkward, if that makes sense. Oh, do I get third here? I might just get third because of the the HP difference. Because the first place guy, I think, is losing out. Oh, I thought I got second. Maybe I'm just wrong. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because there's not much more to this VOD review to learn. Um, oh, yeah, it was this fight, right? So who does this target? I need to watch this a little bit closely. So he targets, it looks like he targets the Orn, right? Okay, I don't understand how Lissandra targeted my, uh... I don't get Lissandra targeting sometimes, but it's fine. I might go infinite here. Uh, but this is against clone, right? So, yeah, yeah. I think I still lose, but I have enough HP. Oh yeah, so this is just a third because of the HP difference. I thought it was a second, I forget. I think I looked after and it's not. I don't have Kane. I still don't have this guy in. I put in a Lissandra instead of the Azir because I got double item. It was probably Azir and Lissandra. Like I can still lose this guy for an Azir. I just don't consider it. Uh, this is the fight that was really annoying for me because look, I think the is Lissandra on the cane? I'm trying to see because he doesn't get teapotted, right? Do you see that exact moment there? Oh, you know what it was? It was Edge of Night on cane that griefed me. Okay, I was really confused here, right? So if you look here, right? At the start of this fight, this guy puts his Lissandra in the back row, right? If you put the Lissandra in the back row, it's not guaranteed to target, right? So let, let's say you have your hexes, right? If you have like hex, and then you have hex, right? And you have hex, right? So this is first, second, third, and then the last one is fourth, right? Let's, let's say like fourth is like... I don't know. Whatever. You know what I mean, right? I'm trying to like illustrate it. It's like first, second, third, fourth row, right? And don't worry about this, right? So if you play, if you have a unit here that you want to target, right? So let's say, let's just put like a, a star, right? Let's say this is who you want to target, right? Or let's say like, this is who you want to target, right? Putting it here. Uh, I drew these hexes wrong. I'm going to start over. I'm going to start over. Let me just, let me draw it off to the side. So let's say we have a hex here, right? You also have a hex here, right? And you have like a hex like here, right? And these are like the opponents and these are like the front ones. And then you have like a hex here. You have like a hex here, whatever. Anyways, right? So there's a hex in the middle here. Um, if this is the opponent... And you want to guarantee targeting on this guy, you don't place it here or here. You place it in the one one row back, right? So if this is the first if this is the first row and you want to target this guy, you don't put your unit here. You put it like one row back, right? So if you look here, my Lissandra is gonna target this Nico because my Lissandra is in the second row and it's directly vertical with it, right? If I wanted to target this one, I would put my Lissandra here. If I want to target this one, I put my Lissandra here to guarantee it, right? Uh, the same with this one. So that's why you second row the Lissandra to target these ones, right? If you put your Lissandra too many rows back, it becomes RNG of who it targets, right? So this guy isn't placing this to target my NAR. It's placing it to target RNG, right? And it should be RNG, I think, between this one and this one, right? Because it depends on who... It's usually the cane because the cane walks up, right? So I wanted the cane to get targeted because he's my shittiest unit and I didn't want my spark to die. But that's my first mistake because he has edge of night, right? So if you watch how this fight plays out, this guy didn't even position his Lissandra to hit my Gnar, right? He did not because I, I, I literally baited the positioning, but this is entirely my fault that I lose this fight. Because what happens here is the Azir and the Lissandra hit the cane. 
the cane um the cane just fucking dies or no the cane i think the cane procced edge of night early and the lissandra lost the aggro on it right if we watch this fight i'm trying to figure out exactly what went wrong here because i think this is important to the vod review and sorry if it adds an extra like five minutes but like i think this is like a good learning experience so she's targeting the cane right i'm pretty sure it looks like she's targeting the orn but she's targeting the cane actually and you see there edge of night procs right and you see the Lissandra turn and face the Nar because the Nar is the closest unit. And that's what, and that's how I lost this round. Because I might have been able to beat this if my Nar got a good wrap. Because look, the Lissandra puts it in the fucking cookery. And then I have nobody aggroing the Lissandra. And then my, my Nar dies. And that's how I lost this fight. So um, that's because... And I was confused, but it's because of the Edge of Night. Right? I was still confused because the Kane didn't die as soon as the Lissandra turned. Right? Because even in the fight, I'm like, why did the Lissandra turn so fast? Because if my Nar killed the Lissandra, uh, like if if my Lys if the Lissandra targeted the Orn, then the Orn would have lived. Uh, the Nar would have killed the Lissandra, and then there's a chance that my Nar wraps and wins the game. Because if my Nar wraps the back line, right, that could be an, that can easily be like an average placement diff, right? Anyways, uh, that's the VOD review. Uh, it ended up being a Nar reroll game. Um, you know, I'm not trying to like abuse the. Uh, the nar reroll line i was just trying to play it to like tempo and i wasn't even sure how good it was i was mostly just trying it out um it is getting nerfed but uh you can look at that game of how you can change game plans and even though my augments didn't work out really well the quality of my board was really high and i feel like i played around it and then you can still get a top four uh anyways thank you for watching sorry if it's a bit long-winded especially at the end there when i was trying to explain the hexes and stuff but uh yeah uh hopefully it was informative